What's the haps? I'm Maroka and today I'm going to be taking a quick look at Mushroom 11 by Untame. This is a game I caught back at PAX last year in 2014 actually, so it was something I was kind of aware of the existence of, it was just something I would, I'd played and was interested and intrigued to see what would happen with it, so it's finally out and we can actually finally take a look at it. So yeah, this is a kind of a puzzle platformer thing with some very, very unique and different mechanics. Not something you've, you'll ever have seen before, I don't think. And it's got some interesting stuff going on. It's kind of difficult to explain how it works, so I think the only way to do that is really going to be to show you it. First, let's have a look at the options. So we have video settings, got resolution and enhanced shading, I guess is kind of more a performance kind of thing. It's a very simple 2D platformer kind of thing, so yeah, that's probably about all you really need, I suspect. Audio settings, I got uh, music and sound effects on separate sliders. That's pretty decent. Controls, not rebindable, but hey, there's only two of them and they both do very, very similar things. You got an eraser and you got a fine eraser. Um, Weasel that that will become obvious how that works when we get into it. Yeah, it's on left click and right click. You can also use Z next, so I've never once ever bothered to use that, but they're there if you want them, I suppose. Uh, what else we got? So in miscellaneous, uh, got there is language, but it's kind of greyed out. So whether the implication there is that they're going to add more languages in the future or not, I don't know. It'd be good to see, but admittedly the entire game is dialogue free anyway. This would only apply to menus. So as long as you can model your way through the menus in English, you can play this game. Where there is a timer, so you can. It's a puzzle game, so you can see how quickly you can finish the levels, I suppose. And yeah, that's about it. Let's uh, let's head on in and have a look at this thing. So. We are basically a mushroom, presumably Mushroom 11, perhaps, the name implies. So we have no direct control over this blob, but this is, this is us, the blob is us. And basically, as I say, we've got an eraser. We've got the, we've got the left click for a big eraser, right click for a small eraser. And when you erase the blob, it will disappear, but it will grow back. The blob always grows back. You can erase the entire thing. Right down to just one blob. It was a bit crazy if you try to erase the last blob, but it will always grow back as long as it's touching the floor. I think I think I think the way the mechanic works is as long as it's touching the floor. There's occasionally moments when you can't can't grow it back, and that's usually when it's like mid air. So I think that's the only defining thing there. As long as one bit of your mushroom is on the floor and on safe floor, you can always grow it back. And you can use this in interesting ways. As you can see, I can cut it in two now. I can delete part of that. If we delete enough of this, the other bit will grow back. So if I delete all of that, the other half will grow. So we can use these in very interesting and weird kind of ways. Now, so you don't really have any direct control over it. You can't tell it where to grow. You can just remove bits and kind of encourage it to grow in the direction you want. So if I delete all the left-hand side, it's going to grow on the right. If I delete all the right-hand side, it's going to grow on the left. And it'll sort of move along. For some reason the game plays in a right to left kind of format, which is a little odd, given that, you know, almost everything in Western culture kind of goes in a right, uh, left to right kind of format. It's a little odd, not sure why they've chosen that, but it's something you get the hang of fairly quickly. So you can see you kind of got a bridge there. Normally it'd be like, oh no, we've fallen off the bridge, and fall into the void. So you can see what I want to do there. Can you it just kind of, as long as it's touching the floor, it'll always continue to grow, and it won't go where it's being deleted, so it'll just kind of grow around the eraser there. It's touching the floor on that side, so it'll keep growing. It can't grow down because the eraser's there, and it kind of makes a bridge. So if I delete that side, and then quickly fill that, I can just kind of delete that, and it's going to grow out the other side. So it moves along. And along the way, you know, that one of these blue things is basically going to act as a checkpoint for us. And we may find a few organisms and things that we can eat along the way. Uh, I'm not sure what. Oh, uh, okay. There are two checkpoints there for fine reason. Okay. I was wondering why they would put two checkpoints there like that, but it's basically because I think I don't know what. What do I want to do here? I'll juggle it, I suppose. Let's let's just move it quickly. I think. Yeah, as long as you don't put too much weight on that one, I think that stays intact. Okay. Cool. There's a few other mechanics, they've got switches in here, there's a lot of moving parts, it is a puzzle platformer, so hey, we do that. And now I've got a spinning thing. Oh god, this looks like this is going to be bad. And if I were to step off it, it would stop spinning. So, we want to keep stepping on it. I don't, I don't know quite how I'm going to do, deal with this. I think the way it works is by lopping off a chunk of it, maybe? That didn't work in any way, shape or form. 
Let's get back on here. Could use the fine ones kind of spread it out, I suppose. I suppose what you want to do is this? No, cut it off. And see what that does. So as long as that half is pressing the button, that's gonna fling that across. That's gonna make it across, so we delete that half and we're across. Okay, I'm kind of surprised that worked, but there you go. Such is the nature of puzzle games. I'm not great at these things, but... I do like this. This is such a this is such an interesting mechanic. I've never seen anything like this before. So many puzzle platformers are all just kind of the same. This one's so very, very different. So there's a weird kind of planty organism up there. You can gain them. They're mostly just kind of for keeping score. There's a, there will, there'll be a number of these different organisms throughout the level that you can... If you touch them, you will absorb them into your mass and it will tell you how many of, you got, how many of them you got at the end of the level. I don't think it makes any other difference other than it tells you how well you've done, really. Uh, I can't for the life of me think how you would get to that one, to be quite honest. Unless you got just really lucky with the catapult and it catapulted you right up there. That's actually probably actually exactly how that would work. So you can see just by sort of squidging it up the ledges, it kind of makes its way up over the ledge. You can do that easy enough. There are some blobs on there that it will kind of... I can kind of bridge the gap around. Oh, no. Nope. I goofed that one. Basically, I kind of... If I can kind of grow it over there, it'll be okay. There should be enough there that... If you do it right, you can kind of grow them around... Yeah, like that. Okay, you can kind of grow it around the obstacle. So now it's it's kind of locked on there now. I don't know. I kind of want it to be up top, but I don't suppose it matters too much. These get all these background bits, they kind of count as ground, so it will grow off them, but like see as you saw, while I was falling, I just kind of I was deleting it but not growing anything back, which is kind of why I ended up falling to my doom so frequently. It only grew back the moment it touched solid ground. So there's prob there was probably some more collectibles up top. There's one of those things up top, probably. See, I'm kind of small now. It won't grow back until it touches something. Should be okay, though, I think. Let's grow it across here. Squidge it down. We can give it a bit of a dangle. <laughs> and through this narrow gap. Oh, wait. Apparently in a minecart now. Okay, I have no idea where this is going. It does keep slowly introducing new mechanics. And to be honest, I'm kind of surprised at what they can do with this. It seems like a very, very simple mechanic. It is a very simple mechanic. Oh god, uh, that's the thing I collected, there we go. That's not worked for me though. Apparently these rails are electrified and yeah. If I touch the rails, it all ends. So I, I, I guess the safe way to do this would be to- oh god, oh god, what am I doing? The safe way to do it- nope. Don't touch the rails at all. The safe way to do it would be to just repress the mushroom into the minecart and keep it there, I think? So when it goes over the hump, we'll just do that, no. Keep those in the cards. Yes! Held! Oh my god. Lose that bit, lose that bit. It's okay. If it gets separated and half of it gets killed, that's okay. Oh, that didn't work. That didn't work. We've got a checkpoint though, so that's okay. we we'll make another attempt at that. Let's just cut it into lots of pieces and hope a bit lands in there. It did! Just keep it in the cart, keep it in the cart, keep it in the cart. Still some in there, that's okay. That... Oh, okay. I see, that's how that goes. Cool. So that was new. I was like, oh, oh I guess I need to get on the cart again, do I? Uh-oh. In that case, I may have failed this. Yeah. What I can do is probably try and grab that blue thing, though. And kind of just sort of... Almost World of Goo our way around, you know, in World of Goo you always kind of try and hang on to, like, ledges and stuff. No, that's not going to work. We are fried! We are fried. Back to the checkpoints. Fair enough. It's kind of a tricky one. But yeah, they keep adding, like, different things that interact with you in different ways. Obviously, if you touch... If you, if you touch water, you float. If you touch lava, obviously, you burn up. But only the bits that touch it burn up. Um, okay. Then we can... Quickly move along here, and I want to kind of try and drop into the cart. Quick, 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 quick! Nope, not fast enough. Should have moved a little faster on that one. I could try and... yep, there we go. Got a bit of that. Let's lose that bit. Catch those in the cart. That bit fries, doesn't matter. We're not interested in that bit. We can always grow back, it has infinite regrowth potential. And then... Might be able to get it along here. Quick, 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 quick! Quick little mushroom! Go, 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 go! No! I thought that was it. 
But yeah, there's a, there's, there's a few things they keep doing with it, and it's, it, it is surprising. It's, that's that's failed. You got lava, you got water, you got various different chemicals in this instance. Yeah, we've got electricity now. It's like, don't touch the electricity. Admittedly, electricity electricity functions in a very similar way to the way there's like some purple goop that kind of infects your mushroom, I guess. And if, if your mushroom if your mushroom gets... No, lose that one. There's maybe some issues with the camera, it would seem. Yeah. Uh, it focused on the wrong bit of the mushroom for me there. <laughs> if, you, if you touch the purple goop, you die. If you touch the electric, you die. So uh, maybe some of these mechanics function in very, very similar ways. But in a lot of instances, they're similar, but just kind of subtly different. Let's keep, let's keep really deleting it. No, too fast, too fast. I'm not good at timing puzzles, it would seem. I might be better off showing you one of the early levels that I know how to do. It doesn't involve timing puzzles. I say it's a puzzle. It's, it, there's a lot of skill involved for these puzzles. It's not just figure out the solution. It's all getting it exactly right, getting it, figuring out exactly how to do it in the right way, and timing and whatnot, and... Okay, that's not gonna work. Shame, because the, the exit is right there, you know, there's a checkpoint that would really, really help this along. So, uh, get caught, stay in there. Hard to, tell, hard to tell whether it's still in the card, but it is, it is. It's the important thing. Grow back. Cut into lots of bits. Have some... Can I have something cat? Nope. Not a single bit of it got caught. This is it's surprisingly challenging. The first level is like, hey, this is fairly straightforward, and they can't possibly too, do too much with the formula. And they kind of do. It's surprisingly compelling. Just because it, you, it's so you, you can see what you need to do right, but it's hard to get it, you know, exactly right. Hey, there we go. There's some timing. That's got it sorted. There's a checkpoint, and we're on our merry way. The style of it's really interesting as well. It's all got these kind of grungy, sort of dystopian, futury, industrial kind of thing going on. There's some stuff. There's some spikes. I totally missed that. I should have just stayed in the cart, frankly. You will go through kind of a few different bits. You'll go through like different maybe factories and stuff as you go along, and it kind of you kind of get a little bit of an insight into what this world was once upon a time. There's a wall apparently. Can't go over that wall. Dang it! You just kind of get these occasional sort of insights into the world the world that this mushroom was created in. And it's kind of interesting. Like I say, it's kind of got this vaguely dystopian thing going on. I'm fried. You get adverts and stuff for some old ruined civilization once more in time, advertising new futuristic superfoods. There's kind of maybe maybe some implication that this is this is is the kind of technology that gave birth to this strange little all-absorbing, ever-growing, ever-mutating crazy fungus thing. But it's not, nothing's ever explicitly explained. As I say at the start, the whole the whole thing is completely dialogue-free. It's it, it's entirely left to the to the player's imagination to try and figure out what went on and to infer what the world was like from the things that they see of the world around them. Can we try and stay in here a little bit? No. I think this one's bested me, if I'm honest. And there we go. The last bead drops and fries. It's a tricky level. It really is. This might be as far as I go, because... Heck, I'm not figuring this out, unless one of those magically lands in there. Nope. Nope, not gonna do that. Yeah. This is probably the end of the line for me, and honestly, I'm not sure if there is much more to show you than this. It is a very, very simply, a simple me game, mechanically speaking. I say, you, you've, got, you've got a mushroom. Let's just cut it into lots of bits. Maybe something's gonna land? No, it won't. You've got a mushroom, and you can try and force it through things. The, me the, the mechanics, such as they are, that make the game interesting and compelling, are the world around you. The mushroom never does anything different. You don't directly get control. You just get different things to see in the world around you. Okay, come on. There we go. We're in there now. We're in there. Stay in there. Stay in, little mushroom. Come on. It was more luck than judgment, but we might have made it over the top. We have made it over the top. There is a checkpoint. A little bit of me got, got fried, but it's okay. There's a hook! We can we can hook onto a hook. That is another thing. You can kind of, if I can kind of grow around that, I really want to be able to grow around one of those hooks. There we go, we're hooked. 
we're attached. Can you kind of... If we can extend ourselves, we might be able to grab some of those. In fact, what I could do is that. That would grab some of it. And I can cut a bit off there. I'll grab that. That almost feels cheaty, but it's a totally viable mechanic and tactic and way of grabbing the things in the world around you. It does, like, I'm, I'm continually surprised by the possibilities that are afforded to you by one singular mechanic in this game. They've done a very interesting thing here. And, oh, I thought we were stuck. You can kind of stick some of the machines because everything kind of tries to want to move and you can sort of just stop them. So I guess if I cut a chunk off here, that's probably not enough. If we cut that bit off? No, we're not going to get that. What I could do is put that there. Uh, could I? No, that didn't detach, did it? And put that there. Now it's deleted it because it went too far off the screen. Oh well. Yeah. As I say, I don't, I don't think there's a lot more to show you than this. This is, this is how the game works. It is an interesting title, though. It's very interesting. Um, I think there's definitely something you should have a look at if you're into puzzles. The, mechanic, the mechanics of this are not like anything I've ever seen before. That's really cool. Yeah, this is Mushroom Eleven. I, 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 I feel like I, I feel like I just kind of only glanced the surface of this, but honestly, it's just a simple mechanic executed surprisingly well. Oh God, get up, get up the wall, get up the wall, and there we go. Scooch through the gap, and we're in. Hey. So yeah, this is out now on Steam. It's available for ten pounds ninety-nine, your original equivalent for Windows and Mac. I'm happy to recommend it. This is. Unlike any puzzle game I've ever seen before, it's very cool. Very cool, very innovative. I like it a lot. Mushroom 11, folks, thank you very much for watching. I've been Maroka. I'm about to get dropped in the lava, I think. <laughs> I'll see you next time.